Hello, my name is Matthew Guy from Bonnie Lake, Washington. I'm a 52-year-old young man, and I'd just like to share with you today uh, about living life to the fullest. Now, this is a Bible study that I've been doing for about a year with a group of people. And in this study, based on the book of Ecclesiastes, we talk about points out of those scriptures, verse by verse. We call it, the Bible scholars call it exegesis, where we exit out of the scriptures, basic truths that we can find or use to live our life more fully, whether it be in a real positive sense or also sometimes the negative things, because Solomon, who wrote the book, certainly lived in some negative ways, and we want to learn those ways as well, so we can av avoid those bumps in the road, as it were. I want to read to you a passage that I've paraphrased out of, out of Ecclesiastes 9. Go thy way, eat your bread with joy, and drink your wine with a merry and joyful heart. Live joyfully and contentedly with your spouse, whom you shall love all the days of your life, and whatever you do in this temporary life, do it with all your might and passion. For when you are dead, there are no more opportunities. Because God now accepts your works, and your debt has now been paid. Therefore, let your garments always be spotless and pure, and strive to walk in the fullness of my Spirit. But always remember, you will never find total fulfillment, security, and happiness in this world apart from God. Also keep in mind that natural abilities and talents do not always win the day. You will encounter many uncertainties, perplexities, temptations, and hardships. Therefore, tap into my grace and power to sustain you along the way in your journey through this temporary existence on earth. Ecclesiastes 9, 7 to 12. And that is kind of a verse that I believe encapsulates one of the most powerful themes in the book of Ecclesiastes, and that is to live your life fully with passion, whatever you are doing, eating, drinking, going to your job. Maybe you go down to the bingo hall to, uh, to socialize. Um, maybe you uh, are a stamp collector, or you like to get on the Internet and learn new things, or like my friend Joel, who started his video business here right out of his home and who so graciously offered to help me out. Whatever it is that your giftings and talents and, and callings are that God has placed in you, those special things that nobody else can do like you, God wants you to live that with passion. He wants you to live that with gusto, as it were, and to find what it is that you're to be doing. Uh, so often, I think, in this life, so many of us, and I've been guilty of it too, we get into a rut where we go to work, whatever our hours are, 9 to 5, 8 to 6, whatever it is you work. We work, we're tired, we come home, we eat a little dinner, we plop down in front of the TV, and we do that day after day after day. But God has created us for so much more than that, my friend. You have passions, you have abilities, you have talents that you can tap into, that you can therefore use and, and, and live your life more fully in the way that God would intend. And as we're sitting here talking today, I'm reminded of a, a movie that my daughter and, and granddaughter watched the other night called Sea Biscuit, about a horse from the Depression era, a little horse. And again, our scripture talked about that sometimes talents and abilities don't win the day. It's not always about talent and ability. That horse was one of the smallest horses and yet was a champion because of the passion that it had. And for a while, Seabiscuit lost that passion. A lot of people put that horse down. It was the butt of, of a lot of jokes around the racetrack circuit in those days. And it would win some races and lose some races. It was pretty mediocre. And it got to the point Seabiscuit did where uh, he just didn't care much. And uh, other horses were used basically, to, uh, they used Seabiscuit to train other champion horses. And so Seabiscuit lost that passion for racing, lost that passion that that he was created for. But then a man came along, an entrepreneurial uh, automaker in that day, and saw something in that horse, and bought that horse and began to train it. And little by little, in about a three-year period, uh, Seabiscuit began to gain confidence again on the racetrack circuit and began to win races. And pretty soon the cry was that, that Seabiscuit should race the greatest racehorse of the day called War Admiral. And Seabiscuit was on the West Coast, and War Admiral was on the East Coast. 
and they set up this race and and by this time the jockey had learned how to race that little sea biscuit and had found out that sea biscuit had a fifth gear what i would call a fifth gear and that when sea biscuit was up against the other uh, competition in the heat of the race the other maybe one or two horses if it just glanced over and caught the uh, eye of the other horse all that that jockey would need to do is just lightly tap whip the horse with the whip and off Seabiscuit would go, almost like in a fifth gear, and leave the pack behind. So the day came when Seabiscuit was going to race War Admiral. At first, Seabiscuit was out of the, out, at the bell, way ahead of the pack, way ahead of even War Admiral. But pretty soon, about halfway across the track, as they went across the track, War Admiral had caught up with Seabiscuit. And they were racing neck and neck, neck and neck. And it got down to the, to the, the, the home stretch, as it were, and Seabiscuit looked over and caught War Admiral's eyes, and the jockey knew, and he lightly flicked the whip, and Seabiscuit took off in that fifth gear. You have that fifth gear today that you can tap into with God's help, and, and, and God would like to direct you in that, even as the jockey directed Seabiscuit, that you would tap into that fifth gear and take off and leave a mediocre mediocre life behind. Leave mediocrity behind and begin to live your passion. Live your dreams as it were. Find those hobbies or those callings that, that God has gifted you with that nobody else can do. And that's, that's kind of what I wanted to encourage you with today. And we will come back again, I believe, and we can kind of begin to share and explore some of these giftings and callings and passions that you yourself were created for. Thank you and have a nice day.